everybody around you doesn't matter you are on this journey alone because i kept on comparing myself or looking at the people that were meant to be beside me i was kind of robbing myself of what it was for me to just start again and pursue this thing again just for me yeah. you can have friends in your class you can have people before you ahead of you beside you behind you but at the end of the day you're in this journey alone i i had so much pent up re resentment like it was really peak if you're expecting more than someone's capacity you're setting yourself up for failure that's a life lesson right there. welcome back to the behind the dreams podcast i'm your host claude williams in this episode i sit down with busy atkins busy is a british nigerian voiceover artist social entrepreneur and presenter and she's becoming a sought after voice in the media industry her story is one that reminds me of the power of staying true to yourself as well as not wavering from what you believe is for you. This episode is special because usually Bissy is the one doing the interviewing, so today is a unique opportunity to get to know who she really is. So join me as we dig deeper into the person who is Bissy Atkins. Okay, you know cool. I mean? This is exciting. Okay. Excellent. Do I look fine? Oh. Are you sure? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you, it's a boy, you know. know. <laughs> no, you're doing good. You're doing Thank good. You. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you feeling? I am doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for coming to my podcast today. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> no. I feel like I feel like it's really, really cool when people invite me into stuff. I just feel honored that you see something that you want to discuss or just want to spend time with me. So I think it's really awesome. No, there's so, so much to discuss you. in all honesty. Um I also realized as much as you've been out there, you've interviewed so many people, yeah. told other people's stories. Uh -huh. I haven't been able to see much of your story so far. It's true, far. you know, you know when you're in the position of the interview, you just literally want to tell people's stories. You don't really get to tell your own story. And then sometimes I'm like, do I even have a story to tell? But then everybody has a story to Everyone tell. Everyone right? does, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, re it's really cool to be on this side <laughs> of the mic. <laughs> Obviously, I know a bit about your okay. your history, about mm -hmm. how you got to where you are now, um, mm -hmm. and we are definitely going to touch on the projects you're working on currently. Yeah. But one, I guess, kind of theme that I've noticed is that you've changed a lot over the yes. years. You've tried a lot of different things. Yes. Um, but it seems like you've now figured out what you're great at, which yes. seems to be telling stories. Uh huh. How did you work out what your strengths are? Um, you know what? I feel like in this thing called life, we're just winging it. Like God has given us a gift to like manage this time that we have and we literally wing it. And I feel like I've been winging it. Um, but then I've also really, really tried to put my best foot forward consistently. And if I'm putting a lot of effort into something and I don't see it manifest and I'm really putting my full all, it's like I learn from that experience and see, okay, so what worked well in that and how can I change it into something that's really working for me and that's actually serving me. So I think that's why I've been able to kind of like, transition from <laughs> academic to creative to present to voiceover to historian to every single thing that I'm doing is literally just about trying to see what works for you putting your best foot forward all the time and I feel like there was an actual shift for me in my 20 something year seventh year mm -hmm. and I was actually like god you know what yeah I've, I've been trying to be in control for a minute now and evidently <laughs> your plan is better than mine mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna let go and let you do your thing mm -hmm. and then i think that's how he's really navigated these past few years and i'm really really grateful what were some of the things you were trying previously that didn't quite work out for you well to be honest yeah when i was in school yeah i actually wanted to be a doctor like i wanted to be a doctor i went to um in my primary school i was like okay cool i'm gonna be a doctor and my gcse's i got four a stars four a's and two b's i'm like yeah let's go well for done. it okay. yeah, honestly if you was to ask me two plus two i'll be like <laughs> where's the calculator <laughs> um but i was really really academic very very studious and i wanted to be a doctor maybe it is because i'm nigerian and your parents are just like either be a doctor lawyer i'm like i'm not trying to read all of that english let me just try save save lives and help yeah. people in that way um and then when i did go into um what did i do for a level i think it was maths biology chemistry and psychology my first year mm -hmm. and i flopped miserably right. as in like from four a stars four a's and two b's i got a d and three u's Eek. and not like i was just jaying I, I was really studious like yeah, that yeah. didn't stop um but the jump from freaking gcse to a, to a yo a no one prepares not you for that joke. right yeah. um and then i was just like okay cool if i can't be a doctor of the whole body anatomy seeing as i got a d in the psychology let me be a doctor of the mind mm. so i was like okay cool i have to 
to restart and I did psychology I'm like I want to be a psychologist um and then when I was doing psychology I went into uni studying psychology and I really enjoyed um child psychology and especially yeah. clinical psychology specializing in child development I'm like okay cool let me do that mm. um but then somehow I managed to win Miss Nigeria somewhere <laughs> and then I got thrown into the entertainment side of things and I was able to travel a little bit and I was like okay no I'm not trying to stay in this UK and do all of this stuff um and then I was like okay let me pursue presenting I was with different artists getting to know them telling their stories in a really fun um personable way that that didn't manifest because at that time afro beats and being african wasn't that cool yeah. <laughs> so I was ahead of time then um so, no I'm gonna stop you there oh in terms of it not working out mm. what was that like for you to put all this work into building up this brand this platform yeah. interview some really cool people but yeah. it's still not working out um what well, is this heartening I have to be frank, very, mm. very honest. It's, it's disheartening. It's like the same thing when you when you study so hard for an exam, you come out with a you. <laughs> Bro, yeah. it's really, really, really disheartening. But then um, I think in when you're living in that moment and when you're actually experiencing that, it's, mm. it's not a nice feeling because yeah. you really do feel like you spent so many hours just trying to make something work, mm. putting all of your effort in something and people aren't either aren't receiving it well or they're just overlooking it and you're just going through a crisis within yourself is like, but you know you're good. Yeah. Like you watch it back. It's not like my questions are bad. It's not mm. like I look bad. It's not like it wasn't well produced. It's like, why isn't it clicking? And I feel yeah. like I've had that across the board um, in different areas of my life. Um, and I feel like, although it's uncomfortable and really disheartening, it's character building. And you don't feel like that at the time. Yeah. But in hindsight, when you look at it, the fact that you were able to, even if it, even if the the career path transitions into something, the fact that you didn't stay down mm. and you got up is part of character building. It shows tenacity. It shows resilience. It shows the fact that no matter what life throws at you, even when you are trying your ultimate best and they're still like, nah, now nah, we'll give it to someone else or we don't see you, the fact that you can still keep going shows yeah. that you're destined for something big. So how did you keep going? Because it's one thing to talk about being resilient, be here all the time, to be successful, you got to be able to bounce back, all of that. But what was it within you that allowed you to keep on going? Yeah, I, sometimes I, I put it down to like being Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I do put it down to being Nigerian because there's something in our blood. I, I haven't yet twanged what it is, mm. but there's a lot of Nigerian excellence around. Like I, there's something. Maybe it's our most probably it is our parents, and they're mm. like you. Like I remember, I told you I got four A stars for for what did I get? Four A stars, four A's, and two B's. Yeah, I got. Not not B, but I got in trouble for getting the two Bs because my mom said your name was Ade Bissi before it was Bissi. Mm. That's not mm, that's sad. What do you mean? <laughs> I was just like, so she's basically saying my name started with an A before it started with right, a B, right, and I was just right. like, yeah, like I actually tried really really hard. So mm. maybe from young they've instilled in in us excellence, yeah. right? So you always really want to try and do the best that you can. You can't afford to fail. And then as well, like growing up in a single parent household, seeing my mom, she's a nurse, seeing her do the night shifts and she'll do marathons. Sometimes she'll do night into long day and then back to night before she comes home to rest. You can't, you can't afford to fail. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's one of a great motivating factor for me. And now, yeah, when I think about it, it's like as as great as that is, I don't want my 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 child to not have the option to be just to, to just be. Yeah, I feel like a lot of us. Um, what's the word? Is it first generation? Yeah, there's a, we... there's a different type of pressure where the the ones that came before us, the first ones to get to the country, yeah. like they had a different environment altogether. They had right. to survive. They had to just make it work. Yeah. But us now, now that we settled in, we're, we're the ones in the jobs, we're developing our own families. Yeah. Like, you want to create something better for, yeah. them, for our children. And it's like our parents have done so well because um, I don't think if me i would leave this let me say me now mm. that i'll pick my bags and leave the uk everything i've known to go to somewhere i don't know and yeah. set up base mm. and have children and make them like do like this they're, they're a different type of different. excellence yeah? yeah they're a different type of excellence but with that comes the burden on us that we just have to be the best mm. and when i say burden is just like someone else anybody else from a different background can just be like hey i i, I just wanna i don't know i just wanna work 
manage a store or I just want to drive a bus. Like yeah. those are options for them where they won't be looked at funny. They mm. won't be looked at like, oh, no, I'm more like you need to be the CEO of the company. Yeah. They don't need to. They have the option to be if they want to, but they don't need to. Whereas we, we have to. Yeah. Um, and now that I'm a mom now, like I want my child to have the option to be whatever it is he wants to be. Yeah. Not saying that you should now go and just be... Waste your life. Waste your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that option is so beautiful to have and I don't think we had it. But that's one of the reasons why I was just like, I have to keep going. I hope you're enjoying today's episode. If you are, please make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. Don't forget to like this video as well. Yeah. But as much as we do have that pressure that we have to carry, yeah. um, obviously it's difficult. Uh-huh. But not all of us are actually able to do that. Yeah. Do you have any advice for people who feel like they might be failing in that mission right now? You know, when when it is coming to when it does come to give advice in those situations, it's always easier said than done. Mm -hmm. It's always easy for me to be like, oh yeah, no nah, man, just go in front of the mirror and affirm that you're great. <laughs> um, and I don't really have much advice with regards to that. It's literally like you just have to find it within yourself. Yeah. Like no one can tell you. But at the end of the day, there's so many people that have the best resources all around them and still don't actualize what they need to or manifest their destiny because them themselves don't see it. Yeah. Um, so you have to actually spend some time looking within. I feel like self is so important and you, no one else around us, the fact that you're here, the fact that I'm here, it's all by God's grace, right? But within everything that we're doing, if you didn't decide, yes, I'm going to pursue this, mm -hmm. no matter how much you have help or whatever, no one's going to do it. Yeah. So you actually just need to look at self and make that decision within yourself and intentionally just try, try, try to keep going. Yeah. I would say ask God to because he's the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, on your journey, you've had some ups and you've had some downs. Yeah. Um, you've had a lot of wins and we're going to touch on those. Okay. But before we do that, have there been any failures that you face that you feel has set you up for success now? Um. To be honest, I do think me failing my my AS levels mm. was as a real a real a real um what was the word it really wake up call yeah it just yeah. shook my boots a lot because mm. especially if you're used to to excelling yeah and I'm I'm born in November so I'm kind of the older lot of my my academic year yeah um you're used to excelling you're used to getting A's you're used to doing well you're used to not even not not teachers pet but you're used to like not getting anything that's negative yeah and when I when I did when I did fail it really did show me that raw <laughs> I feel like it was the worst I've ever felt mm. Like one, because I couldn't believe that me, busy me, I did busy, I could fail. What? Yeah. One, that was a shocker in itself. Mm. And then two is just like, I would have to start again. Mm. And I couldn't stay in Christ the King. I had to leave um, college. So when it was like embarrassing that I would have to leave the college that I had made friends in, like it was quite popular in, and then go back to my secondary school. I went to Lara Trey um, in Balham. And they, the teacher was like, don't leave, don't leave. I'm like, no, I'll be fine. And the fact that I'm now coming back showing that I wasn't fine, mm. that was another thing. And then I felt left behind. And it's just like someone that was in front of the pack now being all the way at the back of the pack and mm. seeing people go ahead of you, that was really, really uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but then within that, I feel like my character built the most. Mm. One where I was just like, Age is nothing but a number because I was really thinking that I'm going to be the oldest of the law and then there'll be some people like technically two years younger than me, mm -hmm. but we're like just a year below. Age is nothing but a number. Um, and then two, like everybody around you doesn't matter. You are on this journey alone. Yeah. And I felt like because I kept on comparing myself or looking at the people that were meant to be beside me, I was kind of robbing myself of what it was for me to just start again and pursue this thing again just for me. And it really just taught me that you're on this journey by yourself. Yeah. You can have friends in your class. You can have people before you, ahead of you, beside you, behind you. But at the end of the day, you're in this journey alone and you need to just pursue it that way yeah. and when i stopped comparing um, com 
what is the word comparing, comparing myself or well, i was gonna say stopped comparison i felt a lot better and i feel like i i i did really really well yeah i ended up getting a a, a and a b amazing yeah so yeah. that was that was lit that was lit from a d and three u's <laughs> this is a big change yeah but you said something so important right there mm. about learning to stop comparing yourself to other people yeah but that is so easy to say yeah but so hard to do yeah how did you do it um you have to cons consistently remind yourself because as much as i stopped comparing myself at that moment there will still be instances where i would compare myself again right. yeah. because you see you're human yeah. like we're all human and we look left we look right we see people around us especially now that we have social media as well yeah. you see so many people do different things and you're just like no but why not me mm. or i've worked really hard how come i didn't get that opportunity or what is what is it about her that's so different or what is it about him that's so different that why is it them and it's not me mm. it's so easy to compare and even till today like when there's certain opportunities that i feel like oh i would have really liked to get that i compare myself um but then it gets to a point where you just acknowledge the fact that there's someone else there yeah. but when you start to compare yourself negatively like try to be like oh no they're better than me in this or they're this this and it impedes on how you view yourself that's where you need to draw the mark yeah. so i feel like comparison we're human it happens yeah. but you need to have boundaries within your mental that you kind of put on to know where it gets too far because when you want to emulate someone you look at them right yeah. so you're comparing oh this is their journey or this is where i am right now this is where they are i would like to get there or maybe this that but when it impedes on how you view yourself that's when it becomes that that's when it starts to have a negative impact on yourself and that's where you kind of need to stop yeah. so for me it was just like i you have to be aware of how far it goes and mm -hmm. I, mentally i was just like yeah this is when it's not serving me anymore right and then i was like yeah but it okay mm. so you've spoken about having i guess this self-image for yourself like yes. having your boundaries knowing where to draw the line draw the line for yourself mm -hmm. but how do you go about actually developing that sense of self where you have that confidence to be like, no, this is me. This is what I'm going to do. going to keep me from forward. You need to spend time with yourself. Mm. You actually need to. And I think it's kind of tough to do that nowadays because even when you're by yourself and you're on your phone, you're not by yourself yeah. because you're allowing so many things to come within you. And that's why I said me being left behind right. during college and everybody going ahead mm. i had a lot of time by right. myself as in that you literally spent time by yeah, yourself yeah no school. i'm missing like, me I'll, I'll go to the library they're not they're not my friends yeah. <laughs> they weren't my age mate I'll, mm. I'll go to the library i'll see the teacher i'll do what i need to do but i spent a lot of time with myself right. and it's really important like for you to do that like intentionally do that and i'm not talking about the trendy stuff where people were like oh yeah solo day and i'm recording everything so i can share it mm -hmm. no you need to be fully present in the time that you spend alone even if that is and i'm not talking about alone time with god i'm talking just by yourself yeah whether it is your journaling i'm mm. i'm not really good at it. i start and i stop that one that, <laughs> that one i won't come out in front and be like i journal every day me i don't <laughs> eh? i would like to but yeah. <laughs> i don't um but whether it be journaling be your thing whether it be just sitting i really enjoy going on walks yeah same I, oh my gosh, I could just be mm. walking around and just be listening to the birds sing and you really get time. That's that's yeah. one thing I do f for sure. Mm -hmm. And I really get time just to to, to think about what, what who it is I am, what yeah. it is I'm doing, what it is I enjoy, what it is I don't like. And I reflect on just interactions that I've had with people. Did I serve that person that well? Or what, what is it that they did? Did it serve me? Did it make me feel good? Mm. And it's really important to spend time with yourself. Yeah. Um, and not in a morbid way, like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm a lone island because you can't do things by yourself, right? You can't, it's really important. Like you need a team. It takes a village. It always, it takes a village. Mm -hmm. um, but when you are, when you do spend time by yourself, you can really cultivate the right community that will serve you well mm -hmm. and that you can also serve to get you to where you need to go, to fulfill yeah. your destiny in the right way. Um, so in order for you to kind of know yourself, you need to spend time with yourself. You found yourself in the entertainment industry. Yeah. You've clearly developed the skill as being an amazing storyteller. Yeah. But in your field, it can be quite often that people don't develop meaningful relationships with people yeah. or the relationships that can actually move you forward. Yeah. How have you been able to find or keep yourself grounded? Um, I... Well, within the industry, right? Um, 
It is true. You, they're, they're very surface level mm-hmm. um, friendships yeah. and acquaintances, should we say. And to be honest, I feel like it's kind of it's kind of cool that way because at the end of the day, you, you are you're not competing against each other, but you're in the same industry. You're trying to go for the same roles. Everyone should just be cool and nice, doing to others as you like done to yourself. I mm-hmm. think that's something, the greatest commandment is, is there for a reason. Yeah. yeah, God gave us that commandment for a reason. Just, just be nice, you know. Um, but then I have friends from, from time that keep me grounded. Mm. And I think it's important to have your your long-term friends because they've been with you through different journeys of your life. Like I have a best friend, her name is Titi, she's awesome. Um, shout out Titi. Um, <laughs> and we were friends from college, first year of college. And we've been friends till now. Like we're going through, she's been through every single thing from failing to succeeding, to winning Miss Nigeria, to, to I don't know, losing a job to get my first voiceover gig, to get my first big payday. Like, she's been through everything. And the same thing for me, um, for her. I've been through that um, th- with her through those. Mm. Um, and I think it's important to have at least one person. Yeah. Right. And they, they, can, they can keep you in your ground. But then also be grounded in faith, whatever mm. your faith is. Um, I think, I think um, having God as, I, I just know every single thing that I am. You guys looking at me now that I'm shining. It's not by my, it's not my own doing. <laughs> Life. it's God's grace and favor that is over my life mm-hmm. and when you think about it in that way you just know that you're literally just here by by someone's grace by God's grace mm-hmm. right it circles you mm-hmm. you you know that you haven't arrived by yourself yeah. that every single thing that you are and every single being that like obviously you work hard mm-hmm. um and obviously you have talent but who gave you the talent mm-hmm. it wasn't all good Mm. And you have to, you have to obviously work at it to make it better. But I really, honestly believe that every single thing that I am, the fact that people may may want to listen to me or speak to me, is not by my own doing at all. Yeah. It's by God's grace, and that really keeps me so so grounded and and really allows me to know that we're, we're all just the same. It's just God's favor. Yeah. And with the gift that He's given me, with the favor that He's given me, I would really love to leave a long lasting impact, make people smile, and just be nice and just do well by what He's given me yeah and that really keeps me grounded anyway i love that you talk about your faith so much like, oh yeah it's so important honestly yeah. what would we be doing without god <laughs> <laughs> would you say that you've always been so strong in your faith i would say that one thing that's been consistent throughout my my relationship with god is gratitude and i think god loves loves love a grateful heart he, he just loves it because it's, it's not i'm not the one that will be serving inside church i maybe i would miss a couple sundays mm. but god sees my heart and i'm so 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 grateful um for every single thing and i think that that's one of the things that has kind of maybe positioned me where i am because honestly i'm so so grateful mm. um but it has been testing at times where i've been i, I would ask god like no come on man like what's going on yeah like seriously like oga like what what, did i fault you Mm. like what is going on um and when you sit down and have those conversations i i sometimes in hindsight i'm like he must be looking at me looking at me like you this girl (laughs) after everything i've given you you still have the cheek to question me Mm. um but it, it, it is an ongoing journey and i do understand that things aren't always always as i'm not always as tight with him as i should be but then i feel like now in my older years right i'm not old by the way (laughs) sorry i'm not even old at all but now that i've experienced the years that i've experienced on this earth (laughs) um it's it's I've, i've really come to understand that god's plans for me aren't for my bad at all and i really just need to lean into that yeah and I feel like if I f- if I'm a nice person, if I if I do according to His will, and I really try to ensure that everybody I encounter, I I I, I live a Christ-like life, right? Mm. Make everybody feel good, serve them accordingly. Like he, he won't he won't he won't fail me. Mm. And with the with when you're when I'm so rest assured that God's got me. Yeah, I'm so rest assured that God's got me, and he he's given me certain examples. Like for example. Um, when I finished college, no, when I finished uni, I graduated, right? Um, I, <laughs> I couldn't get a job. I was working at Enterprise Rent-A-Car, mm-hmm. by the way. I was waking up early to rent cars to people. I was just like, Lord God, this is not my life. <laughs> like you, on the weekend, I'll be there with the, one of the biggest African stars. And then in the morning, I'll just be selling cars. I'm like, bro, 
hey god um and then i was like no i can't i can't i can't i can't do this and then i went back to uni my mom twanged me to do oil and gas management for my master's degree. Ask me why. Oil and gas management. Ask me why. <laughs> it's the Nigerian in her. And she twanged me because I was just looking for something to do. I couldn't sell cars anymore. Mm. And um, she was just like, oh, you like to travel. Um, you're really good with people. You can become an oil and gas consultant um, where you can be consulting with different people, traveling to different firms and make a lot of money. And yeah. I was just like, okay, the philosophy makes sense. It makes sense. So let's, let's go for it. Yeah. Um, um, and I really didn't enjoy that masters. Right. That was character building in itself. Um, but then when I finished that, I didn't want to do oil and gas consulting anymore. And I, right. I, I told God, I'm like, God, I, I, I want to be a presenter. I really want to pursue this presenting thing. Show up, right? Mm. And then two twos, let's say the next month, I got a call um, from his name is Mansour. Um, and he was like, oh, yeah, I've been seeing your presenting stuff. There's this new show coming on Sky, this new channel called Yanga TV. They have this new show called Turn Up, and it'll be really good for you to come in and meet the people um, they are looking for presenters. Mm. And I was like, swear down. <laughs> um, and then that's how I got my first TV gig. Right. And I, I told God, I'm like, God, like, listen, I need, I need you to move here. So I just know that you're on this journey with me to yeah. make, just give me a sign. Mm -hmm. And that was all the sign I needed. Um, and he did it again um, in my 27th year. I went into my year, my, I celebrated my birthday by having a worship night. And I've, right. since then I've been doing it annually, but I went into my birthday um, with worship. And I was like, God, I'm not going to ask you for anything. Mm. I just want you to to just have your way and, and let it be done, right? Yeah. Um, take full control. And then after that, I got my first voiceover gig, right? right? And that was with, um, was it Asda? I was there. Yeah, I was okay, the voice so for George Asda. Small it wasn't a small no. brand. And I was just like, that's how I know that he really just affirms to me consistently mm. that he's got me. Yeah. And I'm rest assured in that. So even though um, the creative industry is volatile, there's, mm. there's, there's not stability like that. Yeah. When I do lean into God, he really shows up for me. One of the things that I can pick up from you is like, you have this amazing energy. Hey. Um, it's, it's coming. <laughs> yeah. it, I think it might be linked to you being so grateful uh -huh. about things in life, etc. Yeah. But either way, like it comes across being in your presence. Mm -hmm. it, it's nice. I also know it must be hard to always do that. Oh yeah! Oh my goodness me! Like when you when you're the person that's hey make everybody happy, it gets tiring sometimes. Mm. Um, and I feel like it was it was more taxing to me. Maybe in from twenty twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. Oh, what's that? Um, one I I I didn't have a family, so I was really I was serving my my group. Mm. the most and that's the position i played um but As now i think yeah within my friendship group, even yeah. within my 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 mom and my sister right, okay. i was that person that's mm. um and then when it, it got taxed into a point where i was just like nah like i, I need i need to i need to just have to step back a bit mm. and i don't i don't require much to to be to refill my cup i don't require much I just maybe just feed me some something sweet and a movie <laughs> <laughs> or a series and I can sit down and just have ha like just my time like that mm -hmm. and I'm back again yeah. uh, but before I didn't do that I was just like I was always trying to mm -mm, just make sure if you needed something call me yeah if you needed this call me or if you just needed someone to just be practical and like cheer you up call me yeah but I just pick up my phone mm. <laughs> I'm bad with my phone and my friends know <laughs> they'll be like this girl will she pick up or will she not pick up but now I have like a, a major excuse like I have a whole son like, you know like guys <laughs> that's hold on um but yeah I set I set boundaries for myself yeah um but you have to it's like you I feel like as you as you age or as you go through life, you're you're meeting different versions of yourself. Mm. You're learning new things about yourself. I mean, it's like you're on this consistent journey of self actualization, self realization. Like certain things that you're, what is it? What is it about me that I'm going through right now? How how you're learning consistently, yeah. mm. and you're evolving consistently too. Um, and you just really need to be very intentional to look at yourself and be mm. like, mm, this is what I need. And I feel like it's important. Like when you're feeling down. Like, ask why. I ask why a lot. Mm. Like, if if someone was to come to me saying that they don't feel, I'm like, why? 
and then they'll answer that. I'm like, why? Because yeah. you really need to get to the root of things. And when you when you kind of uproot everything, not surface level things, uproot it, um, you can you can move and maneuver a lot better because you know the root of it and you can attack it then. Yeah. You spoke about um, having new versions of yourself that you're always meeting and yeah. moving forward. Yeah. What version are you at right now? Ooh, this version of Bissy. Um, hmm, this version of Bissy. What can I say? She's the most grateful she's ever been. Mm. She's the most at peace she has ever been. Um, she's the most trusting in God. Um, like honestly, like things don't phase me too mm. tough no more. I'm just like. God's will will be done. Yeah. Like, it is well. Like, that's something that I say to my friends all the time as well. Like, honestly, like, don't stress. Mm. Like, don't stress. Um, and as I, as, even, as, even as I'm saying it to you, I'm just, like, my, my chest is so full of gratitude because the fact that I can say, like, I, I feel so much peace. Like, I feel like I'm living in answered prayers. And I still want more out of life. I can't mm. lie to you. Like, I still want to, I still want to, like, take over this industry and do this. And I still want to have certain things. But currently, as I sit here right now, like, I want for nothing. Mm. And I'm so blessed and so highly favored to be able to say that. And then to think that God has still so much more in store for me and mine. Like God is so good. Like I, this version of myself, like I feel like younger me would be so proud. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't even think that I would, I would be so, so sure of myself. So, so, so at peace with myself. Just words can't even comprehend how grateful I am to, to be the busy that I am today. Mm. And I'm so excited to see what more God has in store for me because mm. I know there's still room for growth. I'm not perfect. I need to communicate better. <laughs> I need to be a little bit more disciplined. Mm. I need to, I need to um, learn how to just navigate all the moving, moving pieces in my life. Yeah. But as a whole, Hi God, God has bust me. Mm. He bust me good, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm just so grateful. So right now I'm just sitting in a space where I'm I'm at so much peace. Like I have a loving husband. I have a healthy a healthy boy. Um, we're, we're good, mm. you know. Like I I don't want for anything, and I'm just I'm so grateful. I can pursue passions. Like I love all things Africa, <laughs> all things Africa, um, but. <laughs> I, I just I can pursue things that that I really want to pursue, and I'm, I'm just really grateful. That's amazing. Yeah, that's really amazing. Yeah, honestly, like I could cry. <laughs> <laughs> like God is, yeah, God is so good. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up to our mailing list at dreamnation.co forward slash mailing list, and from there you'll be able to find out about all the things that we have coming for you. But with that said, then like. This version of you has all of that. You've got the gratitude. You've done all these amazing things. Mm. But what would you say to the version of you from five years ago? Yeah. If you could speak to her right now, what would you say? You can mm. always learn. Every experience is for learning. Mm. Um, but for younger younger me, like I, I had so much pent up re resentment. Right. Like it was really peak, and like now that I'm older, like it's just like ah, you don't need to spend all of that energy being so pissed at your dad. Did you really need to spend all of that energy being so pissed at your dad? Mm -hmm. But honestly, I did. I, I had, I had so much. It was like, at one stage, I was like, no, how could you just abandon me like this? Mm -hmm. You don't even. Check. I could. I could die. I could be. I could have been dead yesterday. You wouldn't know until what my next birthday, maybe. Yeah. Like it was just so mind-boggling for me that you could you could you can bring forth life and just leave it. Mm. And then I, I I I wanted to, and I think that's another one of my motivating factors at the time. I wanted to be so sick so I could spite him that one day he would just see me on TV or something or mm. in with my name in light somewhere, and then he will remember, and I'll be like, ah, oh, nah, bunny, yeah, right. Um, so I'll definitely tell her that busy that that was was going through her daddy issues to to forgive earlier mm. um let go earlier and 
as as wild as it is, and it's not actually wild, but give him grace. Mm. It's not for me to judge. I don't know why he is the way he is. I don't know what life experiences he's been through. I don't know his childhood. Well, he could just be bad. Well, that's that's cool. Yeah. But people are they're, they're, they're everyone's a what's it called? Everyone's a human. product, and they're, and they're all a product, product of their of environment. environment. Yeah. So I don't know what what his own story is. Yeah. And as human as I am, that I would want grace. I'm gonna make some mistakes for my children, but definitely I would have give. I would have. I would have. I would have prayed for him a bit more. Yeah. I would have given him a lot more grace than I did. It was doing me no good anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, fair enough. Yeah, it made me very motivated, but within my actual self and the condition of my heart, it wasn't good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, now that I've completely let that go, um, I feel a lot lighter. So I would definitely tell younger, younger bis. Um, forgive earlier and don't don't be so pent up about your dad not being in your life for so many people whether mm. it's our fathers whether it's our mothers there's so much pain that can been caused by our parents yeah. and if I'm honest with you I think a lot of us go through our whole lives and never really face that and deal with that Yeah. so I have to commend you massively for for doing that for forgiving him for moving on and allowing yourself to have a more beautiful life as a result so thank you yeah, well thank done. God. it's God's grace on me. <laughs> like, he, he was definitely working on me because <laughs> how did you forgive something that was so painful to you yeah um it takes a lot of effort mm. and it's not like a it's not like a, a quick thing mm. and let me not lie it's not you 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 have a conversation you be like okay cool and then they'll do something and you're like, oh no, I've it. Yeah. And then you have another conversation mm. and it'll be like up and down, kind of like a roller coaster, roller coaster. But I think the moment for me was when I think I had made a couple attempts, maybe three, three attempts. Um, and he was still like consistently showing up as the same version of himself. Right. And I was like, girl, you're setting yourself up for failure. It, it's evident that this is all he can give. Mm. It's evident that maybe he doesn't know better or this is just all he has. This is, that's his capacity. Yeah. If you're expecting more than someone's capacity, you're setting yourself up for failure. That's a life lesson right there. So when I clocked that, mm. I was just like, I'm asking him for more than he can actually give. He's mm. at his capacity. Yeah. And then when I, when I came to terms with that, I was like, oh, it's all cool. Yeah. It's all good. That's powerful. <laughs> like, that's really, really, really powerful. Yeah, it took some time, but we got there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like that's something that people can apply, not just to their parents, but in all honesty, all relationships in their life. Right? Like some people are literally, like you say, firstly, we don't always know people's stories. That's like all. why are you like that? We mm-hmm. don't know. Um, but on top of that, being able to show them grace for the things that you don't see, mm-hmm. but then also understanding that where they are right now might be the best that they can do. And you have to be okay with that. And when you come to terms with that, there's nothing against them, but you just you just never get your life and move accordingly. Yeah. It could be with your friend. It could be when you're shifting friends and you're moving in different seasons. Like you're just, it's just, it is all well. And that doesn't mean you should be mean to anyone or you should be unkind to anyone. You should still wish, mm. and I still wish the best for my dad wherever he is, whatever he is doing, yeah. in whatever capacity he's doing. Like you still do unto others as you would like done to yourself. Um, but you, you don't need to enter them in your in your immediate space yeah. like you protect your space you guard like your heart those boundaries like yeah you have those boundaries um but it's really important and you won't know that unless you actually look at yourself like do i really want to entertain this anymore yeah. you know and that's what i'm saying you always need to try your best to be in tune with yourself mm. like it's literally just you that will be able to navigate this obviously you have people to lean on to mm. for sure but it's still just you yeah yeah I know, obviously, you did your degree in psychology. Yes. And then you did your dissertation around this topic yes, as well. Yes, it's called To the Fatherless, The Effect of Fatherlessness on Romantic Relationships and Women in the UK. And I actually got a first on the actual um, dissertation, which Amazing. was hard. If there was one important lesson that you got from the dissertation that you'd like um, the people listening to this to know, what would it be? And that's a deep question. Yeah, there were so many lessons. It was really tough for me to do that dissertation. Mm. Like just thinking back at it, like I really had to. And you know what was what was really really tough because I I did the interviews myself. Right. So well, what 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 do we call it? Primary research. That's mm. it. So I 
was interviewing all of these young women and our stories were so similar Mm -hmm. and it was like we had a collective trauma right like and i'll be asking them questions i'm like i can see myself in you right and I don't, I don't want us to be sharing. We shouldn't be crying together now. Like they'll start crying in the interviews, and I'm like, it was, it was really that was, it was really just tough to do that. Um, yeah. But I would say, it's very important for us to let go. Right. You can't change the past Mm -hmm. it has happened to you is not gonna unhappen to you and you have to make the decision within yourself on how you're going to proceed in life Mm -hmm. Whether it's going to be your story. Oh my gosh, my dad wasn't in the house. This is why I'm this. This is why I'm this. This is why I'm this. In a negative way. Or this is a fact that it happened. And I'm just going to pick up and move on and create better stories for myself. Yeah. But you have to make that decision with yourself. And when you actually think about it, when you harbor all of that pain and you harbor all of that trauma Mm. you're weighing yourself down you can't really fly as high as you want to fly you're carrying weight yeah um and there's so much release and there's so much power that comes that you 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 carry back you take back Mm -hmm. when you let those things go yeah because it it has a power over you it has a hold over you 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 behave a type of way because it's in your head Mm -hmm. it's in your peripheral vision left right and center you're like oh but my dad wasn't in the house oh but this person oh no 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 no. Mm -hmm. (laughs) sorry i'm making jest of it (laughs) but it's so serious please it's so Mm -hmm. serious um but there's so much you feel a lot lighter and you can really just just operate and 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 fly as you're you're destined to fly when you kind of let those things go so I think that's one of the, the biggest things I learned. Not only, I guess, how are you rewriting or have you re- already re- rewritten it, the story of your own life, yeah. but now you're also telling the story of a whole continent. Yeah. So let's talk about your new baby. Oh um, my gosh. All Things Africa. By the way, if you're not following that, can you go find it now? But it's All Things Africa <laughs> underscore on IG and on TikTok. We're going to go on, oh, we're on YouTube as well. We have no videos there, but it's coming, okay? <laughs> <laughs> give me grace. Give me grace. I have a baby. Um, but All Things Africa is basically like a, a platform where you can learn about all things Africa, our history, our culture, our music, our food, the stories about Africa um, that kind of were taken away from our history books. Mm -hmm. I was sitting down during lockdown and I was watching... um, I, I just love to learn, right? And yeah. um, I was watching different documentaries about this person in Africa, this kingdom in Africa. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so interesting. We should all know this, right? Mm. And then as I was watching it, sometimes I'll fall asleep because it was so boring <laughs> and so monotonous. I'm like, no one really is going to watch this, even though the information is so important Good. for us to know. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so me, I, I can communicate well. I can keep you engaged. I think I'm rather entertaining, just a little bit. Um, and I really enjoy this, right? So mm. I took it up on myself to kind of, to tell our stories. And I started with um, with Nigeria and mm-hmm. how Nigeria was built for 165,000 and it was a business deal um, between the UK and this company that still exists today called Unilever. Right. And they kind of like, they amalgamated different protectorates of Nigeria, the different parts of Nigeria, and they just kind of just mixed us together as a business deal. Mm-hmm. And then when I did that, and I put it out on IG on Nigerian independence, by the way, is because Burner Boy in his... Um, album called African Giant he had a song called Another Story yeah. and at the end of the Another Story there was this guy or at the beginning of the Another Story there was this voiceover telling us about the story mm. um, and then when I put it out it was received so well and I was like oh there is an appetite for this like people are interested mm. um, and I, I know my gift in telling stories and I can engage you and I was just like yeah I really want to tell our stories I, I feel like there's so much um, power in knowing your your history yeah there's so much power in in actually knowing the truth behind what you see today. And maybe the reasons why our economy is the way that it is or mm. why our, our way of living back 
at home is is that way like mm. to know the kind of steps that were taken to kind of why why is there no consistent light in nigeria why does nepa still take our light mm. if you don't know the fact that nigeria was literally just a business deal and as soon as they got their independence everything that they had been given was taken away from them and they yeah. had to start anew with without all the means to actually stand on their own mm. you kind of can give them some grace not too much grace because they're actually 60 something now <laughs> <laughs> they're, not, they're not a teenager anymore no shade, no shade. Um, but you, you can understand a mm, bit better. And yeah. more so, you just see the wealth and power that comes from the African continent. Mm. Like, we are kidding. Like, I'm not just saying it because it's trendy. Mm. We are royalty. Like, we have every single thing on the land, our resources. Like, this, all of this stuff, if not for Congo, would you be it wouldn't it wouldn't be happening all of the resources that we use to to modernize the western society comes from our soil mm. and if you don't know that you you won't know your the power that comes within you and i just want i just want to be able to provide that information for people to know right i i feel like i i will play a little part in them knowing that identity a little bit better um so that they can't be blindsided by anybody saying that oh in africa um we're just all poor mm. and we live in the huts and wear loincloths and stuff like that like mm. it's 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 i just wanted to completely play a little part in shifting that narrative back to the original one of mm. wealth and abundance yeah and um, because so much wealth and abundance exists in africa in different parts of our continent all the different countries and we're so interested and we're so like there's there's no other continent as sick as africa mm. no shade to the other continents but i'm african and it's after root for my people <laughs> <laughs> but there's no other continent that has everything that we have and it's just really important to tell it so um all things africa i do bite size currently currently as of today um bite size information bite size stories spotlights on different things um and it's just really engaging and by by god's grace i really want it to become like that educational resource where we can teach young children as well about their history about the mansa mooses about the kings and the queens and all of these things so all they learn in school isn't kunta kente kunta kente kunta kente yeah yeah from yeah, roots, yeah. yeah. From roots. Yeah. that's not because that's the only thing i learned mm. it was either that and um auschwitz yeah. Um, yeah. Um, th that was the most, apart from obviously the British Empire, yeah. those are the only two things. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the only thing young, young black children should learn about mm -hmm. their continent. Um, so I really wanted to become that educational resource for people to just really know their, their history in a fun way. Yeah. Because um, you shouldn't make education boring. No, without a doubt. No, it should be fun. You yeah. should you should be like, I wanna go and watch All Things Africa video because my teacher Bissy is fun and engaging. And I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I am. Come and learn, let's all be better. I was invited to Africon, which is like one of the biggest um diaspora connecting conferences in LA. Mm -hmm. And because of All Things Africa, I was invited there to moderate one of the panels about being African in the diaspora and ownership over our stuff. And I was moderating I moderated that panel, I was interviewing big guests. I got invited to the um, the mayor of LA's home oh, wow. <laughs> to celebrate 60 years of, um, what's it called, Africa Day. Mm -hmm. And whilst I was there, you know what was really dope? Because I was feeling a type of way about, see, you have that consistently. Like, even when you feel like people have arrived, they haven't arrived. They're all still winging it in this life. Mm -hmm. I was feeling a type of way about all things Africa because I was like, oh, it's really good. And the research takes so long. But I don't know, the following isn't growing that much. The community isn't growing that much. I, I'm not seeing the amount of growth that I wanted to see, that I want to see from it. Mm -hmm. And then one babe came up to me. I'm talking in the mayor's house in LA. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I live on a farm in Northampton, but I'm from Brixton, okay? <laughs> Um, and she's like, no, you're from All Things Africa. And I was like, no, nah, shut up. In my head, I, I looked around. I'm like, no, nah, am I being punked? I'm being punked somewhere. There's no way in the mayor's house in LA, someone is going to come to me and say that I'm from All Things Africa. Mm. And then she's like, oh, yeah, I've been following you. I really, really enjoy the way you do the, um, give the information. I've been looking for something like that, really trying to understand our history and the way in which you give the content is just so good, so digestible. And I really, really enjoy it. And she showed me that she was following our page. And I was just like, oh, God. 
thank you that was the confirmation i need to keep going um so it, it, i feel like i'm serving in 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 my small small way and by god's grace it will leave a, a lasting yeah. impact it's small today but i don't think it's going to stay that way nah amen from your tongue to god's, <laughs> to god's ears <laughs> yeah in your industry you're often taught to be journalist rather than specialist so that yeah. you don't limit opportunities yeah do you have any regrets about focusing specifically on africa you know what, yeah, when I, when I, to be honest, my whole journey of really loving Africa f- is when I was doing the presenting on African artists and it has been difficult. Mm. Like every time I'm like, why am I not getting opportunities? Oh, because you're so niche. You're so niche. Like you're this, this and that. Um, and then I think it clicked for me that like, this is what I'm really passionate about. Like I just know that it's a, it's a long game that I'm going for. Yeah. And this is something that I really am interested in. God hasn't put in my heart for no reason. I think it serves a great purpose. And now that everyone is looking to Africa, I feel like I'm in a really good position. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it is difficult. And if, if that's something you want to do, please trust and believe that you will be feeling left behind a lot you may not get the opportunities that you're looking at other people for. But once you tell yourself and you're at peace that this is a long game, you're focusing on what you want to focus on, it won't just happen like that and you're ready to commit to it, it will serve you in the long run. I don't feel like it's fully served me yet. I feel like maybe in a couple of years time, then I'll be like, oh, okay. So this is why Africa was all in my head. Maybe when I get like a, a travel documentary series in Africa, yeah. you know, exploring the hidden gems or something, you know, that's when I'll be like, okay, cool. But when you do commit to being niched, you are, you don't get all the opportunities. You right. do get overlooked a lot, but you have to focus on your focus. Mm. And then that would be good. Have that marathon mindset. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> Bessie, you have been an absolutely amazing guest. Um, thank, thank you, you so, much. so much for being on today. Um, however, we do end all of our podcasts with the same question. Yes. So, who do you think I should have on as a guest in the future? Um, thank you very much for having me. Um, I would say Donna Won. His name is Muiwa. He's Tem's manager. Okay. Um, he's a real G. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he he has he has so much depth to him. Amazing. So I think he would be good. Muiwa. We'll, we'll definitely check him out. Um but I am so excited to see what happens with Orphans Africa Amen. as well as everything else that you're currently involved in yes. and what you're gonna be involved in. Um and yeah, like I feel like I've learned a lot, especially around gratitude, um and the way that you can just focus on that and rewrite in your own story um and hopefully our listeners get something from this too so yeah. thank you Bissy. thank you so much for having me thank you for tuning in to today's episode we release a new episode every sunday so make sure that you subscribe and follow us so that you never miss out if you'd like some more inspiration while you wait for the next new episode then check out the recommendation above don't forget to follow us on social media and you can send us a question or a dilemma that you'd like us to answer on the podcast this is claude williams you've been watching behind the dreams and we look forward to seeing you at the next Dream Nation events.